Mark chapter 1, verse 35. And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, so long before the sun comes up, he, the Jesus, went out and departed to a solitary place, a place alone, and there prayed. God, who is Jesus, and Jesus, who is God, 100% God, 100% man, that's what I believe. That's a major doctrine to believe. And in his life ministry, in his life, he resorted to prayer. And there are Christians who don't pray. Or they only pray when they have a specific need in their life. He gets off alone way before the day starts. And he's praying for his day. And you know why there's no revivals today? Is because the old time revivalist preachers would get up very early in the morning. They would be hours in prayer. They would be weeping in prayer. When their prayers were being heard unaware and then recorded or, or, or being memorized by others, it wasn't a me, myself, I prayer. It was begging God. It was seeking God. It was trusting God. It was reaching out to God for God to use them, to do something with them, for the congregation. You got Preachers in the ministry today, they're too busy here, they're too busy there, they're busy over there, too busy over here, too busy there, too places to eat, too big to die, I'm doing all this, and they don't have prayer. That's what's missing. And you're not going to get a revival anywhere when you can't get the preacher. And the people in the office of a church or the church to get serious about prayer. Oh, I'm, I'm from Connecticut. I'm, I'm from New England. I'm down here in Florida now. Up in New England, up in Connecticut, we would have midweek service and it would be called the prayer meeting. And we would not begin the Bible time until we had a prayer time. We would sing hymns, then we would pray, and then we would have a light Bible study. And the most unattend meeting was the prayer nights. Simon and they that were with him followed after him, Andrew, James, and John. And when they had followed him, and when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. Everybody wants you because they want something. They're not seeking him for truth. They're not seeking him for the way of God. They're not seeking him, you know, to please the Father. That's what's missing in churches today, too. They're seeking him because I got arthritis, I, I've got a disease, I've got a devil, I've got a headache, I don't have a leg, I can't do this, I can't do that. You know, the, the churches cry out for revival. Do you realize the, th the three and a half years that Jesus was in his ministry, Jesus who is God and God who is Jesus, you know, there was never a revival. Because the people's heart was not right. The people's prayer life was not right. The people's attitude were wrong. One, one, one thing in the Gospels was one time, they, they chased after Jesus. They wanted to make him king because he fed them. That's not the reason for Jesus. There are many people today who talk about the rapture. Oh, the Lord's coming. And they do it because they want to see Jesus 
end their trials and tribulations and troubles and bills. And they're not looking forward to the rapture to see Jesus. They're looking to see Jesus as the problem ender of all problems. And he said unto them, let us go into the next towns, let's spread out, that I may preach, 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 preach. That's also missing in churches today. There also, for therefore came I, I came to preach. Luke will say, he came to seek that which is lost. He's a servant. I am here going about my father's business. I am come to do. That's what a servant's job is. The, the, the Christians today in the church, I say, we're going to look at Mark and see the church. Look at my church. Come to my church. How great my church is. How great our pastor is. That's not. It's not what Jesus said. Mark, he'll say, go into all the world and preach the gospel. He didn't go, go in the world and preach your church, preach your pastor. And the thing is, I see these, I see these, I don't know if you want to call them flyers, advertisers, whatever you want to call them. I see these for these revivals, for these spring meetings, for these things at the churches. I see their ugly pastor's faces. I don't see no Bible. And I'm starting to see no scripture. Dr. Such and Such and and th this singing group and we used to have meetings where we say we're going to get back to the Bible. We're going to reach out to God. We used to have Bible-centered themes for revivals. And we didn't paste your ugly picture. Uh, we put your name. But we would put scripture. That has changed. You're not going to seek a revival when you're looking at the ugly pastor or the ugly visiting preacher's face. Put no confidence in man. Oh, you're, you're being kind of rude. No, I'm not being rude and cruel. I'm being right. And he preached in their synagogues throughout all Galilee. That's still up north. Casting out devils. So this is the state of the condition of Israel when Jesus comes. They are devil possessed. They are sick. Because they are not obeying what God told them to do. We have come to this condition of disease, sickness, tragedies, wars, police, fire departments, hospitals, morgues, and, and cemeteries because man. Disobey what God told him not to do. They're not keeping the law. They're not obeying the commandments. They're in the temple at one, at one time and, and they're, they're making merchandise of the offerings. And there came a leper to him. This is a, a disease, very cruel to the body, of losing appendages and fingers and toes. And if you want to get this aspect like this, look up pictures in, of, of the word leprosy or leper on your. Uh, I don't know what, you, what you call it, your Google, whatever you call it. And you'll see some cruel distortions of the human body through leprosy. And it could be carried over to another person. That under the law, which is given two large or huge chapters, Leviticus 13 and 14, about leprosy. And one of the things of leper, as we reach this leper here, is they were to sit outside the city gate. They were not to be in the city. They were to cover their, their lip, upper lip, under, under upper lip. And when somebody came near and say, unclean, unclean, stay away from me. 
America, they would say, well, he's got rights. Beseeching him, Jesus. Kneeling down to him. And saying unto him, oh, the lepers come out to him. That, that's, that's a violation of the law. As a leper, man, keep away. Stay over there. I mean, oh, we are to tear down the walls of division, tear down the walls of segregation. Yeah, I mean, listen, I, I know we got, there's a cure and all that for leprosy and all that. But I mean, listen, if you got a disease that you can carry over to other people, stay back, stay away. All the world, all, I'm going to say America. Maybe other day, I don't know. I'm going to say all America got upset when we had to wear a mask and they're saying get shots. Well, it's it's going to get worse and you're only going to spread things more if that's your kind of attitude. He says, if thou will, if, you're, if you will, and it's, it's past tense, if thou will, if you will do this, it is your desire, thou canst make me clean. You are able to cleanse me, Jesus. That's what he's saying. There is all power, all authority in you to cleanse me. Now, the question is not that you can't do it, not that you can do it. The question is, will you do it for me? It's not a negative response. And what he's thinking is he's coming to Jesus humbly. I know you got the power, but maybe I'm not worthy enough. Why would you look upon me as a leper? You're not supposed to look at me as a leper. I believe this is the first time a leper shows up in Mark. He knows what the law is. You're... I'm too close to you. And I'm talking about distance. I haven't seen him once go unclean, unclean. He says, you can make me clean. I know what the law says. I know what I'm supposed to say. I'm unclean. But you can make me clean, he says. You have that power. Now, if I walk, if you walk away from me, I walk away from you, and I, uh, I am not healed. Okay, but I know you can do it. I mean, I'd be like a child with with a parent. They had to play. I know mom and dad could afford an ice cream cone, and if I ask for an ice cream cone, I know they can get me one. If I walk away and I'm licking that ice cream, okay. I walk away, I don't get no ice cream, okay. But I know you can get me one. And he's not forcing anything on anybody. And Jesus moved with compassion. Some people say Jesus, you know, he, he's a meanie. He lets all these people die. He lets all these things happen. Well, it's not what the Bible says. You got to realize when it comes to prayer, you have to ask God. There are a few places in, in the Gospels where if you didn't stop Jesus, he wasn't going to take care of you. And the events and the tragedies that happened in this country. Oh, you know, God's such a mean. Well, did you ask him? Well, yeah, we pray. No, no, no. You prayed in the name of Allah. You prayed in the knick-knack, patty wax. Any God can give us a bone. You prayed unto the Pope. You prayed unto Mary. You prayed unto the education system. You prayed to the monkey God. You prayed to every God on the, on the dashboard of life. You did not pray to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the I am. 
and taking the other gods and throwing them in the garbage can, watching the garbage men put it in the back of their truck as they go off into the incinerator of hell. You can't expect the I am, the Jehovah God, to bless this nation, God bless America, when she's living in open for sin, no regard to God, no regard to his word, and no regard to his son. Oh, you want to bring the Muslim prayer mats into the school? Come on in. You want to bring the yoga mats into school? Come on in. You want to pray to the east? You want to pray to the west? You want to pray upside down, stand on top of your head? You want to pray to the great authority of the educators who don't know what sex you are? You want to promote, you know, everything but math, science, and change history and everything like that? You want that God, and, and you want the BOM God, and you want, okay. God's going to sit back in heaven and say, okay. But when you come up to, to God and you've got a serious issue and you come to God and you may have been to every God, you may have been to every religion, you may have been to man, you may have wasted all your money, but when you come to God, Jesus believes that if I just, just touch the hem of his coat, and I will be healed. When you come to God in belief and who he is, Hebrews chapter 11, well, nothing's going to happen. Then you ain't going to have no revival. You got every single church today, and there's people in those churches that don't believe in God at all, that they are doing God a favor by showing up. The ministries are a joke. Here's Jesus, who is God, and God is Jesus, moved with compassion. And according to Mark, as we open up to Mark, this is God manifested in the flesh. This is more than what we read in the Old Testament. I'm not saying Jehovah had compassion. He did. But this is the eyes of God with the eyes of man looking at this man being tormented in leprosy. Looking at him face to face. This very same God is going to be at a cemetery with a friend who is in the tomb and he weeps. That's the first time God ever cried. John eleven thirty five. This is the first time God in the flesh. You know what? This is serious. And you imagine when Jesus goes off in prayer and he's talking to the Father, I will say tomorrow, where we are, nobody, amen. Father, I met with a leopard today, yesterday. Father, you don't realize how bad leprosy is. I saw it in the guy's eyes. And he's suffering. And it's painful. And you know what he said to me? He says, Father, I, he says, Jesus, I know you have the power. If you will, cleanse me and make me clean. Father, I, I, I really felt for the man. So he put forth his hand and touched him. That's a violation of the law right then. You weren't supposed to. Even the priest weren't supposed to touch him. The priest was to look on him. When your house had leprosy, you were to take everything out of the house. Then the priest would come. But you're not going to soil and you're not going to affect Jesus. Leprosy pictures sin. 
It's a disease that fits your sin with serious consequences to you and the people around you. I mean, think about this guy's family. Mama, can we go out and see Dad? No, no you can't. Mama, I want to hug Dad. You can't hug Dad. We got to look at the compassion of God that he came as a man. And saith unto him, I will be thou clean. And as soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy departed from him. I, I, I don't know how that would happen. And he was cleansed. Now, I would got to ask myself, any of the effects of the leprosy that happened to him, are they still there? Do you, did that also get cleaned and fixed? But the leprosy disease itself, it, 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 it's a, like a sore. And it pitches, or one of the things, it, a hair. And it changes color. According to Leviticus 13, 4, if he's a certain color, he's infected or he's not infected. He's cleansed right there in front of Jesus. Compassion of our Savior, this man is now cleansed. Now, he would never have been cleansed if he did not stop Jesus and ask him. Now, the story would be great if we ended right there. And he straightway charged him, the man who has been cured, and forthwith sent him away, and said unto him, Jesus speaking, See that thou say nothing to any man. Don't talk to anybody. But go, that's an interesting word, Thy way. Show thyself to the priest and offer for thy cleansing those things which Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Leviticus 13 and 14. They would have to blow off the scroll of the dust that's on 13, 14, because this has never happened in Israel, in Judah. He said, well, what about Naaman? He was cleared of his leprosy. He was a Gentile. His cleansing was the Jordan River. This man would walk, what was told to go up to the priest at the temple. Hi, I'm. Now the priest would know who he was because Leviticus 13 would say, you must go to the priest and the priest would examine you. The priests were also the doctors. And the priest would say, hey, you're, you are a leper. Get out there outside the gate, unclean, don't touch anybody, nobody touches you. And if you were to be healed, ha ha, as I say that reverently, then you come back and see me. No Jew has ever said that. The, the priest had said, you're a leper, you're a leper, you're a leper. They send them out. They would not come back. It's about the 30th year of Jesus. Within the first year of his ministry, a man comes back to the temple and says, Hi. I, I remember you from somewhere. Yeah, I was the leper, such and such, and you told me I was a leper, and I, yeah. What are you doing here? You're not supposed Wait a minute. What's that about you? I've been healed. What? You're the first one. How, how did this happen? And guess what the guy would tell him? Now you see, Jesus tells him to resort back to the law. 
But Jesus already broke the law by touching him. But what Jesus is saying, I have done a sign to you. You go back to this priest and say, okay, this is the authority and power of Jesus Christ. Problem. We got a problem. When God told the ravens, all right, get some food, give it to Elijah at the brook. The ravens like, okay. When God opened the mouth of the ass and he, and the ass spoke what the angel of the Lord told him to speak. When God gathered the animals by twos and by seven, they, I mean, you didn't have an eighth. <laughs> You didn't have a third. They went in there two by two, male and female. They didn't go male and male. The right species and animals that were clean went by sevens. Noah didn't do that. God did that. When later on, Mark, I mean, we've done it through Matthew. Uh, when Jesus gets on that donkey, he's never been ridden. And the donkey says, okay, let's go for a ride, sir. When that lion faces the donkey and, and the prophet that disobeyed, God said to the lion, tear apart the preacher, but leave that ass alone. Lion sitting there, the preacher's dead, and both the ass and the lion sitting there looking at each other. From the very start of mankind, God told Adam, he said, you do not eat of that tree, the knowledge of good and evil. Do not. That's the first commandment. Do not eat of that fruit. Genesis chapter 3, they ate. God told him, he says, listen, I want blood. You bring in blood to my sacrifice. Cain brought fruit and vegetables. God had Noah preach to the people. Say, there's, a, there's a coming flood. There's coming judgment. Only eight people got in that ark. God told Lot's family, he says, to the angel, he says, don't turn around. Lot's wife, turn around. Jesus told him, says, don't you say nothing to any man. You get yourself to Jerusalem and you present yourself to the priest. And you get the offering. Verse 45. He went out. The man was here. And began to publish it much. And to blaze abroad the matter. Wasn't it great? He, he's testifying to Jesus. He, he's, that's not what Jesus told him to do. He done wrong. And it does not ever record he went to the temple. I don't know if he did or not. I'm not going to read. I'm not going to read in the print. I'm going to tell you he did exactly what Jesus told him not to do. And there are people out there today in the church. They're promoting the church. They're reporting the, the church activity, the church fellowship, the church dick, uh, the chicken, the church bean meal, and the pastor, how great he is, how great this evangelist is, and how great we Christians are this thing. And Jesus said in Mark 16, go in all the world and preach the gospel. And you could be doing whatever you want to be doing. You could be doing anything you could be doing. If you're not preaching the gospel, you are not doing what Jesus told you to do, like this man with leprosy. He's healed. But he didn't do what God told him to do. You're a Christian. Okay, you be the greatest, finest world Christian. But if you don't do what God told you to do, in, now watch this. In so much that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city. He'd done Jesus more harm than good. You see, chapter 1 started off in Simon Peter's house. And everybody came. And Jesus knew that. And the apostles knew that. Man, he brings much crowds. And Jesus was like, you, you go to the priest. Keep your mouth shut. While you go to Jerusalem, I'm going to 
We're going to go town to town. That's what he said. Now, because of this man and his disobedience, Jesus cannot go town to town to preach and teach. Because every time they every time they see who he is coming, they're all going to run to Jesus to be healed and not to listen. And I'm telling you today in the churches, they run to the churches to get the chicken. They run to the churches to get their water bill paid. They run to the churches to hear good music or they hear bad music. And they run to the churches to get a position in that church. And the church today, they don't get to hear the absolute message of Jesus Christ. That's in great error. But was without in a desert place. Says, that's plural. He had to go where there was nothing, nobody. He couldn't go into the city. He couldn't do anything in a mega church. Too many. And the, and the, the pastor and the priest, oh, we're going to have a church full of people. We're going to fill all these pews. Then there'll be too many for, for, for Jesus. And there'll be too many for you to minister to because you couldn't visit all the hospital people that are in a mega church. You can't deal with the families individually with all the other families you've got. Uh, you got to the point today that in the church, you don't even counsel the people in their problems. I, I had a pastor tell me in the church uh, about this family I knew. Uh, I don't counsel. Wow. Excuse me, sir. Then what do you do when you're not in the pulpit? I had a preacher tell me, and I went to, well, I don't do hospital visits. Wow. Really? Aren't you supposed to be ministering to the sheep? And then you want more people. You want your pews filled, and you just tell God, I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that. I ain't doing that. You say, where are you getting this? Jesus told him, go to the temple, show the priest, and offer the sacrifice. He said, I ain't doing that. I'm going to go tell everybody. And that's not what Jesus told him to do. Jesus never told anybody to make Christian movies. Yet they're coming out by the bucket bowl. And they came to him from every quarter. He still can't escape. They're coming to him for something. They're not coming for God. And when you have your church fellowship, invite them to the church fellowship. Invite them to the, do the church skit for the children. Maybe the mothers will come and watch their children dress up and lie about who they are and what they are. All right, they're coming to watch their church. They're not coming for Jesus. Well, you know, three mothers received, did they receive Jesus or did they get emotional? Because emotional doesn't bring you to Jesus. Talking about these great revivals brought forth by hell fire preaching. 